Well, dear viewers, welcome to our channel. In this video, we are going to discuss about the operation of the two-stroke gasoline engine. We are going to discuss about the cycle of operation. This type of two-stroke engines are very common in motorcycles and small generators. So we are going to see how they operate. The conventional three-port two-stroke gasoline engine is demonstrated here. The engine does not have much mechanical parts that are moving. The two-stroke engine does not have mechanically operated valves. Instead, we have ports. Ports that are formed in the cylinder wall and which are covered and uncovered by the piston itself are used for admitting air-fuel mixture into the cylinder and also for removing exhaust gas. This will simplify the design. So this type of three-port two-stroke engine has very simplified design. That's why it is being utilized in low-cost and small engines. In this type of engines, there are only three moving parts, as you can see. The moving parts are the piston, the connecting rod, and the crankshaft. So we have a very simplified design. The cycle of operation is completed in only two strokes. So in two strokes, that means in one complete revolution, in one forward and backward stroke, we will receive power. So let's see the principle of operation by discussing about the cycles. For example, let's begin from the upward stroke. Assume that the piston is at the bottom of its stroke. Now, further travel of the crankshaft will move the piston upward. When the piston is at the bottom dead center, when the piston is at its lowest position at the bottom of the stroke, as you can see, the inlet port is closed by the piston, the exhaust port is open, and the transfer port is open also. On one side of the cylinder, exhaust gases are being removed out. From previous combustion, exhaust gases are removed and fresh air-fuel mixture from the crankcase is getting admitted into the cylinder. Fresh air-fuel mixture, which was previously admitted into the crankcase, will be transferred from the crankcase via the port to the cylinders. Now, as you can see, there is simultaneous opening of the exhaust and the inlet. Someone might ask, because the inlet and the exhaust are opened at the same time, will there be any possibility of the fresh gas escaping through the exhaust? Well, that is why the cowl is there. The crown, this deflector, had it been a flat piston head, had it been a straight piston head, the air-fuel mixture that is coming from the crankcase would have left the cylinder through the exhaust. But due to this deflector, due to this cowl, Air fuel mixture, instead of going straight to the exhaust, it will start to swirl. So it will be deflected up. It will fill this cavity. So by the time the swirling air fuel mixture starts traveling and trying to escape through the exhaust, piston will move back again and close the exhaust valve. So the fresh air fuel mixture is directed to the top of the cylinder. And due to this shape, exhaust gases are directed out through the exhaust port. It directs the exhaust out. It directs the fresh air fuel mixture up to the cylinder. The piston then moves up. Then when the piston moves up again, the upward motion of the piston closes the transfer port and it also closes the exhaust port. So what will happen to the already admitted air fuel mixture? Look what is happening to the size of the red color as the piston is moving up. As the piston is moving up, you see the red color is reducing. There is a decreasing volume, which means the admitted in air fuel mixture is getting compressed. So this will cause compression. In the meantime, have you seen what have happened to the blue color? Previously, it was only this much blue color that was visible. Now, by the upward travel of the piston, look what is happening to the volume of the blue color. When piston is moving upward, see, when piston is moving upward, the volume inside the crankcase, which is a blue colored volume, is increasing. That will cause reduction in pressure. So when piston further travels up, it will uncover this port. The inlet port is uncovered. Air fuel mixture from the carburetor now can flow into the crankcase. Due to the increased volume, there is reduction of pressure suction will be there, air fuel mixture will be sucked into the crankcase via 
the inlet port. Whereas the already admitted in air fuel mixture is getting compressed. You can see that. When the piston nears the end of the upward stroke, a spark is initiated by the ignition system. So this spark plug will ignite the compressed mixture and the air fuel mixture will start combustion. Now what will happen next is the high temperature that is produced by the burning mixture of gases will increase the pressure inside the cylinder. Combustion will cause pressure to rise. That is the power that expanding gases force the piston down. So this will force the piston down due to the gases expanding inside the cylinder. Now this is the effective power stroke. The effective power stroke begins from the time of a spark until the piston travels down and exhaust port is opened. So as the piston is moving down on the downward stroke, you can see the previously opened inlet port is closed by the piston. The crankcase volume is getting compressed. Air fuel mixture that is admitted into the crankcase is now getting compressed because the blue color is getting reduced, which means volume is decreasing, pressure is increasing inside the crankcase. So the crankcase is being pressurized by the downward travel of the piston. This will make the air fuel mixture inside the crankcase to be forced up and wait for this passage to open to get admitted into the cylinder. Now, when the piston is being pushed by the compressed by the combustion of the gases, it will go down and immediately as it reaches here, you see, exhaust port is opened. Immediately at this point, exhaust port is opened. So exhaust gases are removed from the cylinder with very with the residual pressure that they have. Exhaust gases are being removed from the cylinder. In the meantime, further travel of the piston uncovers the transfer port. Air fuel mixture, fresh air fuel mixture from the crankcase will be admitted into the cylinder. That fuel which is admitted into the cylinder is deflected up again. It starts swirling, swirling, filling this cavity. And as soon as it starts moving out, the piston comes back again and closes again. So the cycle will repeat itself. So we have seen that one downward stroke and one upward stroke is required in order to have one power. So we have undergone only two strokes, one forward and one backward, or one upward and one downward stroke is happening in order to receive one power. So this is how it is operating. The cycle of operation is continuously repeated while the engine is running thereby completing the cycle of events in 360 degree. 360 degree of crankshaft rotation is all that is required to produce power. That is why we have called it two-stroke engine. Well, the main drawback of this type of engines is that there is a simultaneous opening of the exhaust and the, the transfer port that will cause very slight leakage of unburned air fuel mixture into the environment. That's why they are not that much popular. Well, thank you for watching. Please leave your comments and uh, subscribe to this channel for more videos of this kind.